In this lesson, we'll look at how images are formed on the mirrors and then we'll multiply them. You will see. Let's understand how a mirror works. Let's take an object. We'll call it O. This is our eye and this is the opening that receives the light inside the eye. We'll talk about it later in detail. The left part we'll call X and the right part Y. Here is the mirror MM. When we are looking at the object directly, then the rays of light come to our eyes and we see the object. When we look in the mirror, then the rays of light from the object bounce on the mirror and then come to our eyes as reflected light. Let's take a closer look. Top ray, let's call it OA and the lower one we'll call OB. Since both these rays are divergent, meaning that they are moving apart and not parallel, they create different angles of incidence. The angle OA creates, let's say, is I1 and its reflected ray AX creates R1, which is the same as I1 based on the laws of reflection. The lower ray OB creates the angle of incidence I2 and it is also the same angle as R2 as the reflected ray BY. These rays AX and BY come and reach our eyes, but our eyes can't see the mirror. We see the reflections in the mirror by projecting AX and BY in a straight line till they meet behind the mirror. So we see the image as if it's behind the mirror. Therefore the image is called a virtual image. Now think about this. We assume like in most books and how most people show that the object is a point and it is smaller than the eye. But most objects that we see are much bigger than the eye. So without going much further, take a break and see if you can draw a diagram for an object that's bigger than your eye. If the object is bigger, there is actually no issue. When you see an object, you see every part of the object and not just one point, but every part is a point. So to draw the object for this purpose of understanding reflection, all you need to do is choose the outermost points. Here are the rays from the top point and here are the rays from the bottom point. And you'll see the both do the same things that we saw a bit earlier. And we will get two outer points in the image. And similarly, all the points on the object would also come and show up in the virtual image that we see. So the image is virtual on the other side of the mirror. The image is also the same distance from the mirror as the object is from the mirror. The image is the same size as the object. But notice one thing, the image is laterally inverted. And that is, the right has become the left of the image. And that's an important characteristic of a reflected image. There is one more DIY project I would like to mention here because it is very interesting and it uses the fact that even though the image in a reflection is virtual and it cannot be obtained on a screen, but yet you can draw it out. And in fact, it helps you to draw. Multiple reflections. If the reflected ray of light falls on another mirror, then it becomes an incident ray on that mirror and it can be reflected again. Simplest use of multiple reflections is when you are at a hairdresser or a barber and they hold a mirror behind you to show you the back of your own head. Periscopes are used in submarines so that the people inside could look above the water to see if there's any danger before the submarine comes up. A periscope can see over or around an obstacle by using two mirrors that are parallel to each other. Let's see this. The light rays from the object hits the first mirror and then it gets reflected and hits the second mirror and then it comes to our eyes. On the channel, I have a good DIY project of a periscope as well. In case you want to make it, you can follow the link in the description. When two mirrors are kept at an angle to each other, then they can form multiple images of an object through multiple reflections. And you would have seen it in many trial rooms of clothing stores. Let's try this with two mirrors and one object in the middle. We'll start with both mirrors in a line or at 180 degrees to each other. At 180 degrees, the image formed is one. At 120 degrees, there are two images formed. At 90 degrees, there are three images formed. At 60 degrees, there are five. At 45, there are seven images. So as the angle decreases, the number of images increase. So 
So there is a formula to find out the number of images at various angles. It is 360 degrees divided by the angle of the mirror minus 1. So if the angle is 180 degrees, then it is 360 divided by 180 which is 2 and then minus 1 which means 1. That is 1 image. So if the angle is 60 degrees, then it's 360 divided by 60 which is 6 and then minus 1 means 5. That means at 60 degrees you get 5 images. At absolute parallel, you will get infinite images and that you can see in this experiment as well. This is also on the channel and the link is given in the description of this video. The kaleidoscope is sold as a toy in many places and in that there are three mirrors forming a long equilateral triangle and this creates beautiful patterns using multiple reflections happening inside. In the DIY, I will show you how to make a unique kaleidoscope that has no broken pieces of small glass bangles or anything inside. You can actually put this on any screen and it becomes a kaleidoscope. Sunlight is also called white light. This simple looking white light contains the entire rainbow of colors where you can clearly identify the seven important colors. You must have seen beautiful rainbows in the sky and doesn't it uplift your spirits and make you happy? If it does, you can also create your own rainbow easily. And this was too simple for a DIY project so I'm just adding it any which way. So I'll show you an easy way to make a prism. Take a transparent plastic sheet of 10 cm by 2.5 cm. Mark the sheet at 3 cm, 6 cm and 9 cm. Use a pin or a compass point to make grooves that will be helpful to bend the sheet. Stick the last fold with glue or a thin double sided tape. Stick this prism shape on any plastic sheet with glue. Cut out any extra edges if you want. Fill it up with water. Make sure it doesn't leak and you have a prism. Note that the splitting of white light into seven colors is called dispersion of light. And the colors are always formed in a sequence named as Vibgyor. That's violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange and red. In the actual dispersion, there are a lot more colors seen because these colors overlap and interact with each other to make even more colors. Let's do a recap and move on to the DIY project. Characteristics of an image formed by a plane mirror. The image seems to be created behind the mirror. Therefore, the image formed is virtual. The image is the same distance behind the mirror as the actual object is in front of the mirror. The image formed is upright, but the upright image is laterally inverted, which means left is right and right becomes left. The image formed in the mirror is the same size of the object multiple reflections. One mirror forms one image but the reflected image can be further reflected using more mirrors at different angles. Just two mirrors at various different angles to each other can create infinite number of images. Then we learned about the periscope, we learned how to make the kaleidoscope and we also saw the infinity mirror. Sunlight has all the colors. A single beam of sunlight can be split into a rainbow of colors using a prism or using reflection and refraction. Splitting of white light into seven colors is called dispersion of light. The colors we get are in the sequence of Vibgyor, which is violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange and red. We'll make a kaleidoscope with a difference, without glass bangles or anything inside except for mirrors. And then you'll also get to use your mobile phone for a good cause. You will need three long strips of mirror around 15 cm by 4 cm. Don't worry about the exact size because it doesn't matter as long as they are long. You can get them cut by the people who sell glass panes for windows and ask them to make the edges less sharp so that it doesn't hurt you. Warning: Be very careful when you're working with glass. Place two of the mirrors as shown about 20 cm from each other. Cut a small piece of insulation tape or any other tape and stick it overlapping a bit on the sticky side of the tape on the roll. Now stick the remaining part of the small tape on the table. You can see that we have a long strip of tape with the sticky side facing up. Stick a small bit on the other side as well to hold this long tape in place. Now make another parallel line with more tape. Note that both the lines are within the length of the mirror. 
Place the first mirror as shown on these train tracks made with tape. But keep this mirror away from the end so that you have some tape left later to wrap around. Now put a small wooden stick with a round body or a skewer or even a ball pen refill touching the mirror body as shown. Next place the second mirror as shown. Then put another stick. Put the third mirror. Put a third stick. Now cut both the tapes from one end but let them have some extra bit sticking out. Now on the other side, you can cut both of them along the mirror itself. Now you need to raise the outer two mirrors so that it becomes a perfectly equilateral triangle in section. As you can see, these sticks between the mirrors help keep the mirrors in place. Otherwise, when we did it first without the sticks, the mirrors keep slipping and the triangle is not perfect. Now tape this up and actually a kaleidoscope is ready. But you can take paper and roll it around the mirrors to make it safer. I am using card paper and using one part of the scissor to make a line on the card paper so that it's easy to bend the paper on the line. You have to do the same for all the bends. Wrap up the paper, tape it up. On one opening of the kaleidoscope, put black tape along the edge of the glass as well so that it doesn't scratch the phone when you keep the kaleidoscope on the phone. And on the other side where your eyes have to see from, put a lot more tape and leave only a small peephole in the middle. That's it. You can now put the open end on any mobile phone and look through the peephole and you will see a kaleidoscope that has endless possibilities of entertaining visuals. Enjoy! Things required for the DIY project. Mirror strips, 3 pieces, 15 cm by 4 cm. Insulation tape, scissors, wooden stick or skewers, card paper, mobile phone. In this lesson you literally saw a lot of fun things and you can even do most of them. In the next we learn about eyes and how we see with them. See you there.